and acknowledgements. First off, a huge thank you to Anna Bagali, my editor at Corinne Oak for believing in me right from the very start of my career. You, LL, never know how much that belief means to me. Secondly, for the Corinne Oak team for making this whole process so easy. And thirdly, to everyone that has followed me and continues to read my work. You all rock my world, so thank you. Dedication. For three people whom I, V, never met but considered their friends, Irvana, Hilda and Rebecca. For Irvana, because of her never-ending support and encouragement, for Hilda, because of her beautiful soul, and for Rebecca, who still smiles through adversity and is one of the strongest women I know. Love you all. Bronwyn. June 2006. Wriggling my toes, I let my cheap white plimsoll drop off, trying to relieve the ache that was getting worse in the ball of my foot. My eyes fluttered closed and the sounds of the busy calf copyright washed over me. The smell of burnt bacon lingered in the air as I leaned against the counter waiting for Dave, the fry cook, to finish plating up the order for table 7. I could have done with not working today, if I was honest. I, D, been bartending at my local pub until just before midnight last night, so the 5 clock wake up to come and serve food to hungry patrons was an tea something that I needed. Right now it was the mid-morning brunch rush at the Greasy Spoon Calf copyright that I worked at, so I still had another three hours to work before I could go home and wash the fried lard smell out of my hair. My tiredness was only going to get worse as the day went on. The thing was, as a mother of a five-year-old child, my duties did not even stop once I clocked off. Order up, Dave announced, setting down four plates onto the serving counter. Without speaking, I slipped my foot back into my shoe and picked up the orders, balancing the four plates along my arms. I sighed deeply, pushed myself away from the counter and struggled across the busy calf copyright towards the table. As I got halfway to the desired table, a pinch to my behind had me gasping and whirling in shock, almost dropping the customer's food all over the floor. We, be ready to order when you are, little darling, Rex purred winking at me. I forced a polite smile even though I wanted to grab the greasy fry-up I was holding and shove it into his face. Rex was a regular, he also left a nice tip, so I called and t afford to be rude to him. Sure thing, I ll be right back, I replied, sidestepping his hand that was dangerously close to my backside. He smiled his predatory smile and I tried not to cringe at his teeth permanently stained a yellowy brown color because of too much coffee and smoking. Before he could say anything else or flirt with me again, I turned on my heel and delivered the food to the waiting family in my section. After a round of pleasantries and telling them if they needed anything to call me, I headed back to Rex's table and tried not to act like I would rather be shoveling horses, poop than working here. Rex was with his brother and his friend today, they all had the same flirtatious smiles on their faces as I stopped at their table and pulled out my order pad. What can I get you today? I asked, trying not to let any of the frustration leak into my voice. I put on a smile, pretending that I'd eaten, tea resin waiting tables and a pink uniform that was made from cheap, scratchy polyester, and that I'd eaten, tea think I had wasted my life. Instantly I was pulled down into the booth next to Rex and his heavy arm slung across my shoulders as he smiled at me. When do you gonna accept my offer to take you out, Bronwyn? I laughed and secretly tried not to envision grabbing his face and smashing it onto the table. I am married, Rex. Not gonna accept anytime soon. Maybe you should stop asking? I suggested. He grinned and shook his head confidently. No. One day I, LL ask and you, LL say yes. Yeah, and one day pigs might grow wings and fly off. So, what can I get you guys today? I repeated, pushing his arm off me and standing up, straightening my awful pink uniform. Rex sighed, and the guys he was with reeled off their orders to me one at a time. I really was an T in the mood for this today. I showed an. T have even been at work today at all, 
Fridays were my day off from the CAF copyright because I worked at the pub on Wednesday and Thursday nights, but a shift had come up this morning and I, D needed the money too badly to refuse. After I, D put their order into the cook, I smiled at Marina and motioned with my head that I was going to take my break. On the way through to the back room, I poured myself a strong black coffee and then almost fell onto the uncomfortable iron chairs because I was exhausted. It just seemed never-ending, every day was so long that, by the time I got home, all I wanted to do was go to bed. That colden, tea happened though, I had responsibilities after all. No one ever told me that life was supposed to be this hard, even if they did I, am sure I would have thought they were exaggerating. While I sipped my coffee, my mobile phone buzzed in my apron pocket. I frowned and pulled it out, hoping it was T going to be Finn, my husband, telling me that he was going out gambling with his friends again tonight. I was pleasantly surprised to see my mum's picture on my screen. All right, mum? I greeted, taking another sip from my mug, letting the caffeine seep into my system. Bronwyn, guess what? She chirped without even saying hello. I raised one eyebrow, curious about what had put her in such a happy mood. What? You, now and Andy. She practically screamed. My body jerked as my heart leapt in my chest. A little squeal escaped my lips at the news that my older sister had given birth. Oh my god. What did she have? When? Is Kai okay? What time? Wait. I jumped from my seat, grinning from ear to ear. It was a little early for this, Sky was only just over eight months pregnant, but they had told her she was carrying low last time she went for her midwife appointment. Little girl. She went into labor in the early hours of this morning, but there were some complications, so she had to go down for an emergency caserian. She, s such a dear little thing, she, s only six pounds and two ounces. They, V called her Evie Lou. Sky, S awake already and laughing so she, S all good too. A happy sigh left my lips at the news. Evie Lou Hanklin, I tested out the name. I love it. My mum giggled like a giddy little girl. I know, it, S perfect. She agreed. So, when are you coming? They, re going to be in the hospital for a few days at least. Why Don? T you all come stay with me for a couple of days. I haven, T seen you and Theo for months. My mind was already whirling with thoughts of that. I had to go there as soon as possible, visit the baby and give my big sister a hug. But that meant I had to get tomorrow off work at the Kef copyright. It showed and T be too hard though, after all, it was extenuating circumstances. It was T every day that your big sister gave birth to a baby that she, D been trying for five years for. That sounds great. I, LL definitely come tonight. What time, S visiting? I could barely wait. My heart ached with happiness and excitement. Being an Andy was something I was going to kick arse at for sure. I loved kids. 7 until 9. I nodded, committing it to memory. I am so excited I can barely stand still. I laughed at myself and bit into my bottom lip. I d better go call Finn and get things arranged. I ll speak to you later and see you tonight up the hospital. I ignored the distasteful little sound my mum made in the back of her throat at the mention of my husband's name. Bye, Bronwyn, see you soon. My coffee and the much-needed caffeine boost were long forgotten as I practically skipped out to speak to Dave. I was going to need to flutter my eyelashes a little to get the day off tomorrow. As I leaned on the counter and grinned over at him, he looked up at me and raised one eyebrow in question. What you giving me that sweet smile for? You can, T have another advance on your wages, you, re already two weeks ahead. Sorry, Brun, he said shaking his head apologetically. I grinned happily, nothing was bringing my happy mood down right now. No, no, I done, do you want an advance, I assured him. My mom just called. Sky had her baby. I chirped excitedly. He grinned too. I really need to go there. I am supposed to be working the morning shift tomorrow. 
Is there some way I could get the day off so that I can stay over with my mom? I asked, pleading with my eyes. Dave was a bit of a soft touch, so I was praying that the begging would work. He sighed and rubbed the back of his neck. I need a waitress. I winced. What if I asked someone else to cover? I begged. He frowned and then rolled his eyes. As long as I have a waitress then I done, T care who comes in and who don't, T. Just sort it out amongst yourselves then, all right? I squealed and nodded, immediately grabbing my mobile and calling Karen to ask her to trade shifts with me, tomorrow for Sunday instead. It took a little convincing, but finally she agreed, so I was now free to go. Next, I put in a call to Finn to tell him the good news. Hey, Buttercup, he greeted as he answered. The sounds of a video game in the background only meant one thing, that he was round his friend Doug's place. I sighed. Sometimes, Finn was like an overgrown man-child. Hey, where are you? I inquired, leaning up against the wall of the staff room. He laughed. You keeping tabs on me again? I ll be home later, done, t you worry about that, he replied, skillfully deflecting my question. I sighed and closed my eyes. I hated my life. It was so hard not to resent Finn, it really was. I was holding down two jobs, on my feet all day practically every day, and yet he was still looking for a new job, after he got laid off a couple of months ago. I knew jobs were hard to find, I knew that he tried, but that didn't. T stopped me from getting angry with him that he was sitting at his friend's house fooling around instead of doing something practical. Even just something small like running the hoover around our small, tired flat would take some of the pressure off me. But no, things like that didn't. T happen. Sky had her baby. A little girl. She, S called her Evie, I announced. Finn, as I expected, Listen, T overly bothered by the sound of his response. That, s nice. He was still playing the game in the background, I could hear guns blazing and Doug shouting things at the TV. I frowned, trying not to let him ruin my happy mood. Yeah. So, can you go home and pack up some overnight things for the three of us? That, ll save some time. I finish work at half past to so I. LL go pick up Theo from school, and you can meet us just outside the school gates. I LL snag us some food to eat in the car. It showed and T take more than an hour and a half to get there. What, car, what you talking about? He asked, now obviously tuning into what I was saying. I sighed deeply. Visiting hours start at 7 tonight. Mom said we could stay at hers for a couple of days, but I... V just switched shifts with Karen so I need to be back here for Sunday morning. We can stay there tonight though and then drive back tomorrow or something, I explained. That sounds like a great plan, Finn replied. I smiled and nodded, but the smile fell from my face as he continued, but I, V been drinking so I can, T drive. My heart sank. You, V been drinking? Seriously? It, s not even lunchtime. I stated incredulously. I, V only had two beers, but I, LL be over the limit. I can, T drive. Plus, I have plans tonight anyway, he answered. I scowled down at the floor at the word plans. I did, T need him to tell me what his plans were. I would bet last week, S paycheck that it involved him getting drunk, losing money at cards and, if he was drunk enough, sleeping with some slut who happened to look in his direction. I tried to keep my cool and not shout at him. I was used to things like this, he, d been cheating on me with anything that moved for the last four years. At this point, I genuinely cold and, t careless. I was with him because I did and, he want to be on my own and because Theo deserved a dad. Of course, I, d broken it off once. Three years ago I got it into my head that I did and, T deserved to be treated like that, and I, D left him. I was strong for a while, and Theo and I coped on our own for almost a month. Then the unthinkable happened. One night, while Theo and I slept, 
a man broke into the pokey little flat that we lived in. I d woke in to find him raiding my living room, looking for cash or anything that he could plan to buy drugs if looking at him was anything to go by. He hadn't, t heard us, he d actually looked just as startled as I had felt when I stumbled upon him with my handbag in his hand and my mother s china figurine in the other. He d run out of there as fast as his legs could carry him, barely getting away with anything, but that encounter had struck a deep terror into my heart because I knew, deep down, that if he, d wanted to hurt us, he could have done. If hurting us had been his intention, I would have been powerless to stop him. I had, t slept right for days after, nightmares of me being unable to protect my defenseless young baby plagued my mind. That was when I made the decision that I regretted almost every day, I took Finn back. But, admittedly, having a man there at night time gave me that safe feeling back that I so desperately needed after seeing someone force their way into my home. Having Finn there kept me and my son safe, and stopped me worrying about things that would have played on my mind otherwise. There was no longer any love between us, hell, we barely even tolerated each other at times. Sometimes I even struggled to remember what it was that I saw in him the first place. Usually I convinced myself that it was his looks that I fell for, though even those had lost their appeal to me because I knew he de rather be off sleeping with other girls than me. Ours was a marriage of convenience, even though it was inconvenient most of the time. Another reason I was with him was because I didn't t have the energy to find anyone else. I d been young when we d got him together merely 17, and I knew that the dating scene had moved on pretty rapidly since I was last a part of it. In my opinion, I was too old to be single again, so I, d just have to suffer and grin and bear it. Many women went through their lives in an unhappy marriage. I was no different to any of them. Not everyone found their Mr. Darcy and lived happily ever after, some people just had to take what they could get and be thankful. Clearly I was one of those people. But I need to go there tonight. That, s my sister and my niece, I grumbled, kicking the toe of my shoe against the wall in anger. Finn sighed dramatically. If you really have to go there tonight then take a train or something. It, s a waste of bloody money but just do what you want. I guess I can cancel my plans and have Theo. I recoiled, shocked at his words. He never usually did anything for me. But now he was offering to cancel his plans and stay home with our son? Seriously? I had, t considered a train, but I could easily do that. Yeah, whatever. You, v been banging on about this baby for months. I honestly can, t take the pouting and whining you, ll do if you done, t get to go there. I, ll get the blame all night long because I had a couple of bears to unwind. I smiled weakly. So he was n t suggesting that I go for me, he was suggesting that I go because I d be complaining and blaming him if I did n t. Typical Finn, something that benefited him again. Will you come tomorrow and pick me up? Bring Theo so he can see my mum? I asked hopefully. My mum would be upset if she did n t get to see her grandson too. He groaned loudly. Can t you just buy a return ticket? Finn, please. I begged. My mum would love to see you too. That was n t strictly true, she would probably rather not see Finn. Please. If you come and pick me up in the morning we can spend the day down there or something. Finn, s relationship with my family was n t exactly a good one, they were amicable enough, but it was a polite front that they all kept up. My parents had never thought he was good enough for me after he accidentally got me pregnant when I was 17. When my father had died two years ago of cancer, Finn hadn't t even bothered to go and say a final goodbye, and had been drunk at his funeral. That had t gone down well and would probably never be forgotten. Ugh, fine. I ll spend three bloody hours in the car tomorrow, just to see your flipping family. Does that make you happy? I gritted my teeth in frustration. Yes, actually, I admitted. Thank you. Silence rang out as I struggled to find something to say to diffuse the tension. My happy mood was now gone. 
I, D, better go see about a bus ticket or something. Make sure you pick up Theo from school at half past three because I want T be here to do it. I frowned, praying he won't and T forget to pick up our son. And done, T drink any more if you re going to be in charge of him, I added as an afterthought. I, L, L, be there. Call me later. He hung up before I even got to answer and drum into him how important it was for him to arrive at the school on time. Deep down, I knew that Finn would be there on time. Although he was a terrible husband, he actually was an T a bad dad. By the time I finished my shift, cleared my section after a particularly rowdy group of teenagers had been in and clocked out, it was past three in the afternoon. I was now running late. The train that I needed to catch to Bath left in just over half an hour, and I hadn't T even packed yet. After a mad dash home, I threw a few things into a bag and then scribbled a note for Finn telling him that I D put some beef casserole into the fridge from the calf copyright for them to have for dinner. After I D written my note, I practically ripped off my work uniform and changed into jeans and a black, stretch t-shirt. Before leaving my flat, I headed over to the food cupboard, going up on tiptoes and reaching into the back. My hand closed around the jar of money that I kept there. As soon as I picked it up and heard the pitiful tinkle of the change in the bottom of the jar, I knew something was not right. When it came into view, I groaned. It was supposed to be our emergency money, something I put into each week from my wages in case something went wrong. It looked as though Finn had had a few emergencies and had neglected to tell me. After unscrewing the top and tipping the mugger contents out onto the kitchen counter, I counted out 37 pounds and 72 pence. I d already been told over the phone when I called about the trains that it was 42 pounds for an off-peak ticket from Paddington to Beth. I ground my teeth, picking up the crumpled notes and change, shoving it into my purse, before stomping over to the sofa and thrusting my hand down the back of the cushions, looking for anything that might have dropped out of a pocket by accident. I needed another 5 pounds for the train ticket. The clock on the wall suddenly caught my eye and I gasped. If I did T leave this very second, I wouldn't T even need to worry about being short on cash because I D miss the train. After swinging my overnight bag onto my shoulder and picking up my handbag, I ran the whole way to the station. Sweat trickled down my back by the time I arrived. The whole time I D been running, I D kept my eyes peeled on the floor, searching for any cash or change that someone might have accidentally dropped. Just my luck though, it seemed that the streets were clean for once. Once I got to Paddington Station, I got in the queue to buy the ticket from an actual person rather than the automated machine. My mouth was dry as I tried my best to come up with an excuse why I didn't t have enough money to pay. This was going to be embarrassing, to say the least. I gulped as I got to the front, the haughty looking woman eyed me expectantly as I stepped forward. As I expected, when she rang my fare through the price was 42 pounds exactly. I did t have enough. Time to bring out the bad acting. I opened my purse, pulling out the money I had, and then gasped, pretending to be shocked. Damn it, I swear I had another ten in here, I lied, shaking my head and pulling open all of the sections. Ma, am, do you want the ticket or not? She asked with no compassion in her voice at all. She, D probably she, D seen this act thousands of times before. I nodded eagerly. Yeah, I really need the ticket. My sister just had a little baby, and I need to go and see them. I done, T get to see them very often, I need to get on the train. Is there some way you could let me off of the five quid? I asked looking at her pleadingly. She sighed and shook her head. It don't t work like that. My till would be wrong at the end of the day, I need all money accounted for. If I discounted your ticket I d have to discount all the people in the queue, she stated, waving her hand behind me for dramatic effect. Please. I really need to get on the train. Maybe I could drop in the other six quid tomorrow night when I get back. I suggested. I would do it, I was t want to lie. She raised one eyebrow as if I had suggested something ridiculous, 
and I felt my heart sink as my eyes prickled with tears. I desperately wanted to see my sister and niece tonight. I didn't. He want to be the last one to see her. Bronwyn? I turned curiously, wondering who had called my name. Rex stood there in his black security guard uniform with his little shiny gold badge pinned to his breast pocket. I smiled weakly. Hi, Rex. I d forgotten he once told me he worked security at the station. Something wrong? He asked, walking to my side and looking from me to the ticket lady. She don't t have enough to pay her fare, the lady stated heartlessly. Heat crept up my neck and over my cheeks because someone that I knew had witnessed my shameful attempt to beg my way onto the train. I thought I had another ten in my purse, but Finn must have taken it or something. I am just under five quid short, I muttered, snapping the clasp of my purse shut angrily. I would just have to go tomorrow morning with Finn in the car, there was no alternative because I'd eaten, T drive so I couldn't, T get there any other way. Rex smiled and shoved his hand in his pocket before holding out a ten pound note to me. Here. Call it your tip for the next couple of weeks, huh? He offered. My heart leapt in my chest at the gesture. Seriously? I gasped as he pushed the money into my hand. He nodded and smiled. Seriously, he confirmed. My shoulders relaxed as I grinned in thanks, turning and sliding the total through to the lady at the ticket booth. Oh God, thanks so much, Rex. I really, really appreciate it, I gushed. Maybe he isn't he's such a bad guy after all. He laughed and pulled out a set of keys, unlocking the door to the ticket office. No worries. Maybe next time I ask you out, you, LL consider it for a split second before you turn me down, he joked. I laughed, knowing it would and T happened because I was married. He winked at me playfully before heading into the ticket office and settling himself into a chair. Rex, you, Rhea Star. Dessert is on me next time you come to the calf copy, right? Okay. I grinned happily as the lady slid my ticket across to me. Thanks again. See you next week. I called over my shoulder as I sprinted for my platform. The train ride was long, but luckily I had found a magazine on one of the empty seats so I kept myself amused by perusing that. To keep myself busy I made a call to Finn, double checking that he d picked up Theo and that he d feed and bathe him before bed. He agreed to leave London the following morning early, so would be at my mum's house a little after 10 in the morning. That would give Theo a fair few hours with his grandmother. When the train finally rolled to a stop, I called and T keep the ecstatic grin off my face. It felt nice to be going home. Bath was where I grew up as a kid. We all moved away when I was in my early teens. But in the last few years my sister and mother had moved back to be closer to other family members. I de-elected to stay in London with Finn. As I stepped out of the train and onto the platform with my overnight bag on my back, I was t expecting to see my mother standing there with a huge grin on her face. My heart leapt into my throat as my eyes prickled with happy tears. It had been way too long since I de seen that smile. A squeal escaped my lips as I ran the five steps to her, engulfing her in a hug that was sure to have crushed her ribs against her lungs, but she hugged me back with the same intensity. The smell of her hair wafted up my nostrils, and the feeling of being a child again washed over me making my stomach clench as a contented sigh left my lips. Oh, mum, it's been way too long, I croaked as the emotion bubbled over. I spoke to her often, of course, but it wasn't t the same. It certainly is. I v missed you. She pulled back, smiling over at me as she stroked my hair down for me, her eyes soft and caring. Come on, let s get to the hospital. Visiting started ten minutes ago, she suggested, looping her arm through mine and tugging me towards the car park out front. I v missed ten minutes of baby hugging time. I gasped, faking outrage. She chuckled and started gushing then about baby Avi and how beautiful she was. In fact, she didn't. T stopped gushing for the whole car ride. 
When we arrived at the hospital and mum led us up to the maternity ward where Sky was, the hearty looking nurse stepped in front of us and shook her head. Sorry, but it s limited to three visitors at a time. One of you will have to wait outside and then you ll have to swap in after, she stated firmly. I frowned. I remembered visiting hours rules when I was in hospital having Theo, but I d had a lovely midwife and she d allowed us to break the rules providing we were quiet. It looked like Sky s ward had different staff to the one I gave birth in. Mum groaned and nodded, waving towards the door. You going, you haven, t seen her yet? Tell whoever it is in there that I am waiting and we ll all take turns swapping in every ten minutes or something, she suggested, giving me a little encouraging push towards the door. I was t going to argue with that, I could barely wait another second without seeing my sister and niece. As I stepped through the door of the room, I looked around hesitantly. The room had six beds in, all occupied by the look of it. On first glance I called T. C. Sky or her husband Brandon, so I walked in, peeking around the curtains, hoping for the right one, muttering an apology to each new mother as they looked up to see who I was. When I got to the last curtain, my heart started to pound in my chest. The sound of my sister's tinkling laugh caught my attention. As I stepped around the corner, she looked up and a huge smile crept onto her lips. Brownie. She cried happily. I didn't even realize I d been holding my breath as I d stealthily intruded on everyone else's intimate moments, but seeing my sister for the first time in three months, and knowing that my big sister now had the one thing she always dreamt of, made the air rush out of my lungs. Somehow, my legs carried me across the room to the side of her bed and I engulfed her in a hug. I was so happy for her that I didn't t even feel the need to scold her for calling me brownie even though she knew I hated it. I was so pleased for her that it was a little overwhelming. Congratulations, I whispered, kissing the side of her head as my eyes filled with tears. Thank you. She chirped. She looked so thrilled to be a mum that it was practically bursting from every pore. Want to hold her? I nodded, pulling back and wiping my tears away quickly. Heck yeah I do. Where is she? I turned and came face to face with my brother-in-law, Brandon. Hey, daddy. I greeted, pulling him into a hug too, patting his back proudly. Hey, Addy, he replied. I giggled excitedly and pulled back, immediately seeing the little clear plastic cot that was on the other side of Sky, S bed. I, D, walked straight past it without even noticing. As I stepped to the side of her cot, I could practically feel the broody building inside me. The little bundle in there made my eyes widen as I chewed on my lip and looked over the edge of the cot. Heavy was beautiful, stunning even, and love built in my chest so much that I thought I would burst with it. I will definitely be a kick-ar Santi, I vowed. The tears were full on flowing down my face now as I looked down at the perfect little bundle. She was sleeping peacefully and still had the slight discoloration to her face where she d been inside the womb for so long. Slipping my hands under her body, I picked her up, carefully cradling her in my arms. She did t even stir. Through the material of her baby grow, I could feel her tiny heart thrumming against my hand. I was lost in the beauty of a newborn baby. She was so precious that it made me want to cry, and she was so lucky to because she was going to grow up with amazing parents. I felt the goofy happy smile stretch across my face as I stared at her. Hi, beautiful, I greeted. Hi yourself. It was a male voice, and it came from behind me. I frowned, looking over my shoulder to see a man with dark blonde hair and dark brown eyes. He was breathtakingly handsome. His jaw was lined with short stubble, his hair was longer than I would normally like for a guy and curled slightly at the nape of his neck where it needed a trim and tidy up, but strangely, it suited him like that. He wore a dark gray suit that fitted him perfectly, showing off his strong shoulders and small waist. He d paired it with a white shirt underneath and a red tie, which hung loosely around his neck. As his chocolate-colored eyes met mine, a smile twitched at the corners of his full lips. A lump formed in my throat for some reason, 
but I didn't. T know why. Sky cleared her throat dramatically. Er, Harrison, done. T even think about hitting on my little sister, she warned. Besides, she s married, she added rather smugly. I blinked a couple of times, trying to come back to reality because looking at him made me feel a little weird inside. Harrison. I d heard of this guy. He was the one who was in business with Brandon. The two of them had both been made redundant from their advertising jobs last year and had decided to go into business together instead of looking for another job. Sky and Brandon had become extremely good friends with this guy over the last year, so I d heard. I d never personally met him, but now that I knew who he was, I knew to stay away. Harrison Baxter was a ladies man and fancied himself as Beth s answer to James Bond, apparently. One of the gorgeous stranger s eyebrows rose. Married, really? Damn, all of the hot ones are always taken or gay. Why is that, do you think? He mused, cocking his head to the side playfully. His voice did funny things to my insides. I was lost for words. Nothing was coming out of my mouth at all, so I just looked back down at Evie who was nestled comfortably in my arms. You happily married. He probed, stepping closer to me. The heat emanating from his body to mine was making me feel a little jittery and I cold and T stand still. No, not at all. I gulped and nodded in answer to his question, trying to ignore the feelings of lust and want that were battling inside me. It was wrong for me to feel like this. I knew it was. I was married, and although Finn cheated on me occasionally, I would never do the same. Happy married with a child, I confirmed, nodding. Only part of that sentence was a lie. I did, in fact, have a child, I had just never been happily married. The lie came easily to me though, it always did in front of family. I never told them how hard things were for me, no one knew what my life was truly like. From the outside I played the perfect little loved up wife, even my sister Deedon, T know about Finn and what went on between us. They all knew he, D cheated once, three years ago when I left him, but no one knew that it continued after I took him back. I, D often wondered what my life would be like if we hadn't, T reconciled, but the answer was always the same, my life would have been exactly as it was now. Only I would climb into a cold bed every night and not have anyone to wake up when I got scared of a stupid noise in the middle of the night. Harrison sucked in a breath through his pearly white teeth. Bugger. Oh well. Never mind then, he replied, reaching up and running a hand through his already messy hair. Turning my attention back to my niece, I smiled. I could still remember Theo this tiny. It was almost as if he had been born yesterday. I was so broody that it was unreal. I already knew that I would want another baby for weeks after this. After 15 minutes of me cuddling with the tiny little bundle and talking to Skye about the birth, the curtain pulled back and someone peeked in. Sorry to interrupt, but you have two more visitors outside itching to come in. Could you maybe stagger your visitors so that you only have two at a time? The nurse asked. I winced. I d been so carried away and lost in the moment that I d forgotten that my mum was outside. I was supposed to have swapped with her so she could have a cuddle too. Oops, mum, s going to kill me. I was supposed to have swapped after ten minutes. I chuckled guiltily and dipped my head, planting a soft kiss on every s forehead before holding her out the sky. I ll swap back in with mum again in a little while, I promised. I did. He wanted to leave but with a restriction on visitors, only two people were allowed and plus the baby, s dead. Harrison stood from the chair that was by the side of the bed. I should probably get going anyway. Give me a call when you, re home, and I, ll come for a longer visit then. I only came to bring my present, he stated, grinning. Sky made a half scoff in her throat and shook her head. Yeah, thanks for that. At least her Halloween outfit is already sorted. Halloween outfit. That s a coming home outfit if ever I saw one, Harrison replied with mock hurt. I frowned, 
wondering what his present was, until my eyes settled on the baby Yoda outfit that was hanging over the back of a chair. It even had a soft toy lightsaber sewn to its belt. I gasped. Oh god that's awesome. Did you get that? I love it. I chirped, laughing. I was a huge Star Wars fan. Harrison grinned and nodded rather proudly. Yep. Saw it and had to get it. The nurse cleared her throat dramatically behind us, signaling for us to get a move on. I grinned at the outfit again, already wondering where he got it from and if I could get one in Theo's size. I, D better go. I, LL see you in a little while. I turned and walked towards the curtain, knowing my mum was probably biting her nails down to the quick while waiting for me to come out. Behind me, I could hear Harrison saying his goodbyes. About time. Mum announced as I walked out. Brampton's mother stood next to her, both looking just as eager as she was to take my visitor's place. Neither of them wasted any time darting in there as soon as I stepped out of the room. I eyed the clock. It wasn't even half past seven yet, so I would get plenty more baby snuggling time before visiting hours ended. Instead of leaving, like I de assumed he would, Harrison stopped at my side. So, how old is your son or daughter? He s almost six. I smiled at the thought of Theo, he was the only good thing that had ever come from his jack-off of a father. Sky talks about you a lot. You live in London, Dun T U. I nodded in answer to his question. You driving home tonight or No, I am staying at my mum, S, and then my husband and little boy are coming tomorrow to see Evie. That s nice. You er want to get a coffee or something while you wait for your turn to go in again? He offered, nodding at the maternity ward door. At the mention of coffee, my mouth watered. I hadn't t hit anything to eat or drink for the last few hours, and was actually ravenous. Sure, I agreed, following him along the hallway and out of the ward. You not got anything to rush home for? He shrugged. Only tonight, s Holyoaks but I taped it so we, re all good, he joked, winking at me. So you, re a Star Wars fan? I asked, remembering the Yoda outfit. A grin stretched across his face. By the time we got to the hospital calf copyright, we were engrossed in a debate about which was the greatest Star Wars movie. Still immersed in the argument, I loaded a sandwich onto my tray while he made two coffees. When we got to the till, he paid before I even had a chance to get my purse from my bag. He waved his hand dismissively at my protests and offered to pay for mine. I had to smile at how sweet he was. Choosing a seat in the busy calf copyright, Tuck turned to his job and how he knew Brandon and Skye. Surprisingly, conversation was easy and flowing. He was extremely easy to get along with, and incredibly funny too. I could see why my sister and brother-in-law liked this guy. I d known him for a little over half an hour, and in the time he d got me under his spell too. He was a genuinely nice guy, and hot to boot. When his leg accidentally brushed mine as he shifted in his seat, my mind was already running rampant again. I really had no idea what was going on inside me. I d never been attracted to another guy before, never even entertained the thought, but the warmth emanating from his tie to mine made my stomach clench and the skin on my arms to prickle. I took a bite of my sandwich, noticing he was watching my every move. So... What will it take for me to convince you to stay at my place tonight instead of your mum, s? He asked, raising one eyebrow as he sipped his coffee. I laughed at his attempt. The involuntary smile tugged at the corner of my mouth. I really didn't. Do you want to find this guy funny, but I just couldn't. T help myself. Copious amount of alcohol, dancing in a kebab, I joked. Done, he agreed. You, LL have the time of your life. He smirked at me, and my lungs constricted at the promise in his voice. It had been so incredibly long since I, D had someone look at me the way he was looking at me. Sure, Finn and I still had an active sex life because the girl still had needs, but he didn't. T look at me the way Harrison was, not anymore anyway. 
The little glint to his eyes was making butterflies swoop around in my stomach. And if I was T married, if I did T have a five-year-old waiting for me at home, two jobs and rent to pay, I would push him down onto the cold tiled floor and ravage his body until he begged for mercy. I frowned and swallowed the lust that was starting to build up inside me. When his gaze flitted down my body, I stiffened at the smoldering passion that was building in his eyes. I had T hit anyone look at me like that in what felt like forever. That look was enough to give me sleepless nights. If I D been going home tonight instead of staying at mum S, I would have certainly used Finn S body for my own satisfaction. Thankfully, my mobile phone ringing saved me from thinking up a witty knock back to his suggestion. I looked down at the screen, seeing my mum S number flashing on there. Hey, mum, I answered, putting it to my ear again. I am out. It S your turn to go back in, she stated before hanging up, probably because mobile phones were forbidden in the wards. Without needing to be told twice, I stood up and pushed my phone back into my handbag. That was my mum, it S my turn to go back in again and see Evie. You coming back up too? I asked, picking up my sandwich and taking a couple of huge and highly unladylike bites. Harrison shook his head and sat back in his chair. No, I LL let family visit today. I LL see them all when they get discharged. I sighed. Lucky you. I frowned, wishing I lived closer. Harrison would probably see my niece ten times more than I would. Taking the last bite of my sandwich, I threw the wrapper into the bin next to where we were set. Nice to meet you. Thanks for the sandwich and coffee. A charming smile stretched across his face as he stood. Nice to meet you too. I guess we LL have to take a rain check on the dancing and keep up. By the time we were finally kicked out of the hospital by the grumpy looking nurse, I was so tired that I could barely keep my eyes open. It was only half past nine, but I d been up since five in the morning working at the calf copyright, so it had been a long day for me already. After calling Finn to make sure everything was set for the following day, I climbed into bed and settled back against the pillows. My eyes fluttered closed as I thought about little baby Evie. My hand unconsciously went to my stomach as I thought about a little newborn baby being mine. I chewed on my lip as the broodiness built up even more, as I imagined the baby having dark blonde, messy hair, just like Harrison, S. I shook my head to clear the fantasy before sighing dramatically. Just stop thinking about him, Bronwyn. You, re being ridiculous right now, I mumbled into the darkness. Even though my body was exhausted, my mind was still whirling, so I lay there awake for almost an hour. By the time I did finally drift off to sleep, I d pretty much convinced myself that Finn and I needed to make another baby. Finn turned up a little after two in the afternoon, even though he d promised me he d come in the morning. Theo, of course, was welcomed with opened arms and my mum was cooing over him with teary eyes as she d hugged the life out of him. Finn, on the other hand, was greeted with a tight smile and a nod of the head. The atmosphere between them was so tense you could probably cut it with a knife. I did write time and time again to make peace between them over the years, but my mum would never actually like him. She just tolerated him for my benefit. During the afternoon visit to the hospital, it became apparent that Finn was in no mood to socialize. The whole time he d stood in the corner, only speaking when spoken to, and hadn't t even held heavy. He looked like he was bored. Knowing him, he was probably just planning his escape so he could go back home and hang out with his friends. Once rising hours were over, my mum took us all out for dinner and was tea satisfied until Theo had eaten practically his whole weight in ice cream. She was in her element with my son, that much was apparent by her grin and twinkling eyes. After dinner, we d spent another hour at my mum's place with us two gossiping while she sat on the floor and played with the brand new cars she d bought for Theo. Finn hadn't t said much, just sat on his phone playing games, online poker, I d guess. My goodbye with my mum had been a tearful one. I hated to leave, 
and was going to miss her terribly. Each time I saw her and then left again, it always seemed to get harder. We both made promises to make more effort and to get up to visit the other more often. She invited the three of us to spend Christmas with her at the house. Finn hadn't. T seemed to like that idea at all and had just shrugged and told her that we d try. I knew it Walden. T happened though because dry was a word he used often. It was an empty word. He d just said it to placate her. By the time we got home, Theo was sound asleep. He did T even stirred as Finn unbuckled his seatbelt and carefully plucked him out of the car. I smiled at the sight and walked ahead up the rusting metal stairs that led to our flat. Once I d opened the door, I ushered Finn through and then ran to Theo's bedroom, pulling back the bed covers and watching as Finn set my baby in his bed. The broody inside me was still raging, threatening to boil over. Seeing Evie had made me broody, but remembering Theo that little, remembering his first smiles and the way he would giggle when I dried him after he d had a bath made my womb clench and my body long for it so much that it was almost painful. As Finn snuck out of Theo's bedroom, I followed behind, my mind still full of thoughts of tinny baby clothes and soft toys. When Finn turned back to me, I smiled seductively, wondering how to broach the subject of another baby even though we could barely afford to live and he had no job at the moment. I am going to bed too, you coming? He asked nodding back towards our bedroom. I chewed on my lip at that offer, wondering if maybe accidental pregnancy would work better. I immediately scolded myself because I would never do anything like that on purpose. Theo was an accident and, although I loved him more than anything in the world, if I could choose the circumstances and timing of falling pregnant with him, it certainly wouldn't to be with the prick of a father I had chosen, nor at seventeen as the timing. Sure, I agreed. Evie was beautiful, done, T you think? I forgot what it was like to hold a newborn baby. I winced at how stupid I sounded. He shrugged in response and walked towards the bedroom at the back of our flat. I followed him in there, deciding to keep trying. You remember Theo being that little? He sighed dramatically. I knew this would happen, he mumbled. Knew what would happen. I pulled my shirt over my head and tossed it onto the chair before pulling on the button of my jeans, tugging them off too. You and babies, he answered, as if that cleared everything up. I silently wondered if I, d and rumbled. He had probably guessed where I was going with my little prompts, and even sounded like he was expecting it to happen. You want another baby, am I right? He asked pulling his clothes off and slipping into bed in his boxer shorts. I laughed quietly, blushing. What on earth gave you that idea? I was merely asking if you remembered Theo being that little, and his expression told me that he was not falling for it in the slightest, so I decided to give up. The knowing look he was shooting me was easy enough to see. I crawled up the bed in just my underwear, straddling his hips. Okay, yeah I was thinking about it. What do you think? I asked, lowering my body down on top of his, trying to look seductive. If there was one thing I knew about Finn Reynolds it was that he never turned down sex. He sighed and kept my bum in his hands, looking me right in the eyes. I think that they, re expensive. I think that I am out of work right now. I think that you and I are in no state to be thinking about anything like that at the moment. I gulped and pouted trying to get my own way. I knew it wouldn't t work though. Finn and I were married, but there were no real feelings there anymore, maybe there never were. I called and t ever put my finger on a point where I could say I was totally in love with him so maybe I d never been in love with him, I did and t no. We just kind of put up with each other and were barely even friends. Sex and paying the bills, that was all we shared really. We were just drifting through life as a couple because it was easier than starting over alone, not because either of us actually wanted to be in this destructive relationship. He licked his lips and pulled me closer to him. I tell you what. In a year we LL be in a better position and we LL talk about it again then, how about that? I sighed and nodded, trying not to feel disappointed. 
I was being irrational. My hormones were driving me forward because I d been cuddling with Evie. We really cold and t afford another mouth to feed. Finn was right. Another year would be better. Okay, I agreed. He smirked at me then, and his eyes slid down to my chest. Strangely, I was reminded of the way Harrison had looked at me in the same manner yesterday, but this look from Finn Deedon, to even get my senses stirring half as much as that cocky little grin on Harrison's face. His tongue darted out, tracing his bottom lip as he pulled me closer to him. How about we just practice for tonight? Finn suggested. His fingers trailed up my back, hooking under the clasp of my bra, pulling gently. I nodded and bent my head to kiss him, ignoring the taste of stale cigarettes on his tongue and the disappointment that settled in my stomach. I closed my eyes and, although I felt terrible for doing it, I imagined Harrison's hands on my body instead of Finn's. I imagined Harrison kissing my neck and pulling at my knickers. Thinking about Harrison Baxter in that way made my body more excited than it had been in years. June 2012. I tipped my head back and closed my eyes, letting the late June sunshine warm my face. The sounds of laughter and childish music surrounded me. The happy and light atmosphere was very pleasant compared to what I would usually be surrounded by on a Saturday afternoon, the calf copyright lunchtime rush and rude, demanding patrons. Unfortunately, not much had changed in the last six years. I still worked hard, too hard sometimes, but that cold and TB helped. Finn had managed to land himself a job, even though he was currently hanging by a thread and on probation, so his wages took some of the pressure off me, well, when he was tea drinking or gambling it away it did anyway. Theo was now 11 and in his first year at secondary school. He was growing up way too fast for my liking. I still hadn't, T convinced Finn that we needed to make a second baby, the timing just never seemed right, maybe it never would be. My life continued to feel like one long, never-ending, uphill struggle. I lived for days like this one where I could relax, breathe, and let my problems disappear. Coming home to bath always made me feel like this and I hadn't, T been able to contain my smile since we derived the previous night. Today was Evie's sixth birthday, so of course, Sky and Brandon were throwing her a party fit for a princess, complete with pink bouncy castle and a red-nosed clown that looked like something that had wandered straight out of my childhood nightmares. To ensure that I stayed as far away from the red-haired, big-footed thing, I denominated myself chief restocker of the buffet table. It was keeping me busy because the 20 or so kids that Sky currently had running around their garden had descended on it like locusts as soon as the tin foil was removed from the plates. At the moment, over to one side of Sky's large back garden, Brandon and his very reluctant helper, Theo, were running the musical bumps competition, and I called and T help but chuckle at Theo. Estes grunted expression because he would probably rather be in every s bedroom playing with the Nintendo 3DS that she got for her birthday from her parents. I think we have more chocolate fingers in the kitchen, I ll go get them, Sky said, fussing and moving the empty plates around. Sky, you have enough food here. Seriously, stop stressing, I scolded, grinning and shaking my head. Sky wanted everything perfect for her little girl, S birthday. I could understand why, of course, she was her one and only child, their old and T have another because they D been through so much with the IV treatment just to make my adorable niece. As a result, they spoiled Evie as much as they could and treasured every moment of her childhood. Sky sighed and chewed on her lip. Yeah, you re probably right, but I think I LL go get them just in case. She nodded to herself and looked up, her expression changing to a smile as she looked over my shoulder. Hello, Harrison. Fashionably late, huh? The mere mention of his name made the muscles in my body tighten. You know how I like to make an entrance, he replied playfully. I was a little reluctant to turn around. Harrison Baxter did funny things to my insides, things I really showed him to allow myself to feel, but I had no control over them. Whoa, what happened to you anyway? 
Sky asked, frowning. Unable to resist any longer, I turned to see Harrison standing just behind me. The white t-shirt that he wore was rumpled and covered in dirt and what looked like grease, his blonde hair was messier than usual, and he had a black smudge on his right cheek just under his eye. Somehow, his disheveled and dirty appearance made him look even more appealing. I really needed to get a hold of myself and quickly because my husband was here with me for a change today, so I called T let this guy affect me like he usually did. He shrugged, looking down at himself. Bloody tire burst on the way here. I had to stop and change it, he explained. Done, T you have a A rack? Sky asked, clicking her tongue in disapproval. Harrison nodded in response, pulling a rectangular, badly wrapped present from a Toys R Us carrier bag and setting it amongst the other presents on the table. I do, yeah, but if I D called them out then I would have been sat there waiting for ages for them to turn up. I just changed it myself because it s quicker. Deedon, do you want to miss too much of the party? I might have missed cake. He said with mock horror. Sky sighed, picking up a few empty plates. I ll just take these inside and then I ll find you one of Brandon s shirts or something to put on. You look a mess, she chuckled, shaking her head. This is what you get for buying an old classic car instead of something reliable. Ah, I knew you, D find an excuse to knock the car again, Harrison grinned, picking up a sausage roll and popping it into his mouth hole. As Sky left, Harrison's attention turned to me. Long time no see, Bronwyn, how are you? The way he said my name made my pulse quicken, the way his tongue toyed with it and caressed it had my knees weakening and my cheeks threatening to blanch. I gulped hoping I could keep the lust out of my voice. I am good. How are you, apart from putting some poor roadside assistance man out of a job? I joked, hoping to come across as aloof. He stepped up beside me and picked up a paper plate. Not bad. I v been working a lot more than I usually would, not as much time off as I d like because of the company expanding recently, but other than that, I am good, he answered eyeing the buffet table with interest. So, did I miss all the fun? I grinned and shrugged. You missed past the parcel and hide and seek, I replied, before nodding towards the clown who was calling all the kids to sit down on the grass in front of him. Looks like you, we just in time for some magic though. Harrison looked in the direction that I nodded, and his eyes widened in apparent horror. Oh sheet, it s like Pennywise from a T. He recoiled visibly before leaning in so he could whisper in my ear. Why would someone hire him for a kid's birthday party? Have they not seen the film? Mafo s going to go mad and start killing people soon. I burst out laughing and shook my head. Want your boat, Georgie? I replied, using a line from the book that was actually one of my favorites, and the reason I did t like clowns to this day. I nudged him with my elbow and nodded towards the scary arse clown. Go ask him if his balloons float, I dared. Harrison laughed a deep throaty laugh, his eyes twinkling. I forgot how funny you are, Bronwyn. I grinned, a little bemused by his comment. Harrison always said I was funny, but that confused me because Finn never seemed to get my humor at all. Maybe it was because Harrison and I seemed to have so much in common and got along so well. I had t seen him for almost a year, yet he just walked in and we were already laughing and talking like we d spoken only yesterday. It was nice, and one of the reasons I looked forward to coming to visit family each time. You not eating? Harrison asked, loading his plate with food. I smiled. I had t actually eaten yet? I was too busy making sure all the kids ate first and that Finn had lined his stomach to soak up some of the alcohol that he d been consuming since 11 o'clock this morning. Yeah, I am. I picked up a plate and just as I reached out for the last plant cheese sandwich on the tray, my hand collided with Harrison s who was reaching for it at the same time. I smiled, pulling my hand away, nodding for him to take it. Sorry, you have it. He grinned, picking up the sandwich. 
Instead of putting it on his plate though, he set it on mine. You have it. I know you done tea like most of this other stuff, he replied, shrugging. I frowned, wondering how he would know that. How do you know that? He turned away from me, loading up his plate with an array of the food that Sky, my mother and I had been slaving away at making all morning. Believe it or not, I've been to several of these parties with you over the last few years, and I know you were a fussy eater just from watching you select your buffet food. You only eat cheese sandwiches, no pickle, he stated as if it were obvious. And cheese pizza, but you leave the crust. Looks like all the pizza has gone though. I smiled, bemused that he would have noticed my eating habits. Right. Well, thanks. I picked up the sandwich, taking a bite, musing over how different Harrison was to my attentive and ungracious husband. Harrison would certainly make someone a great boyfriend or husband one day, when the lucky girl finally managed to catch his eye and make him settle down. You on your own today, no date? I inquired. I never actually saw him with a date. I knew he played the field a lot because Sky had told me, but I, D never seen him bring a plus one to anything. He shrugged. Nah. Can T hit on you if I bring a date, can I? He joked. One side of his mouth pulled up into a playful smirk, and I tried extremely hard not to notice how attractive it made him look. Instead, I focused on the black smudge on his face. You have something on your cheek, I muttered, unsure how to respond to his flirting. Immediately, he swiped at the wrong cheek. I smiled and pointed to the mark but as he rubbed it, it just smudged even more and grew. I chuckled and picked up a napkin, dipping it in my white wine that I d been working on for the last hour. Here, let me. Stepping closer to him, I tried not to inhale the spicy aftershave that he wore, because the smell of it made the hair on my arms prickle with excitement. He had always caused this reaction in me, it was like he turned me into a giddy little girl just with one of his boyish, carefree smiles. Even with my husband standing less than 30 feet from me, I still called him. T curbed the attraction that I felt for my brother-in-law's business partner. My fantasies and imagination of things I d like to do to his body bordered on obscene for a few days after I d seen Harrison. Finn was in for a good night tonight because lust was building up inside me in preposterous levels. I gulped as I finished cleaning off the smudge and stepped back. A sexy little smile tugged at the corner of his mouth. Thanks. No problem, I muttered in reply, feeling my cheeks flush as I tried not to let my dirty thoughts show on my face. Here, Sky said from just beside me, causing me to almost jump out of my skin because I d been so inappropriately lost in the moment with Harrison. We both turned and looked, seeing her holding out a clean pale blue shirt. Should fit you. You and Brandon are both about the same size. Harrison smiled gratefully and took it, immediately yanking his own shirt over his head. My eyes widened as I caught my first ever glimpse of his golden tanned chest and that fine spattering of blonde hair on the base of his stomach, the treasure trail that led to the good stuff. My dirty thoughts were back in abundance. Knowing it was wrong of me to devour his body with my eyes in front of everyone, I turned my head away. As I turned, I caught sight of Finn. He was exactly where I last saw him, propping up the booze table. Except now he was T on his own drinking away his sorrows. Instead, a girl who I used to go to school with was standing there talking to him. My eyes narrowed as I realized who she was, Morgan Henschel. She was one of Sky's friends, so a couple of years older than me, but I remembered her for being a serial boyfriend stealer. If my memory served me correctly, she prided herself in being able to steal even the most committed of boyfriends. It was like some sort of game for her at school. They were laughing together. She was standing too close to him for my liking. I knew he was drunk. I could tell by the lopsidedness of his smile and the way his left shoulder was slightly lower than his right. It was always the giveaway. I was t surprised he was drunk. He d had his first beer at 11.00 clock so he d been drinking already for a solid six hours when he rarely accompanied me to a family gathering 
He always seemed to drown his sorrows in alcohol. It was one of the reasons why I didn't t ask him to come with me often, and I think one of the reasons why he did it. I frowned at the pair, gritting my teeth in frustration. I am going to go say happy birthday to Evie. Harrison, S hand touched the small of my back for a second and I turned my attention back to him and away from my husband who was clearly flirting with someone else while at my niece, S birthday party and standing in my sister, S garden. Watch my food for me, huh? Make sure some little sod kid don't, T come and nick my chicken nuggets. He winked at me playfully and, just like that, the tension inside me diffused momentarily. You, re such a child sometimes, I joked, rolling my eyes as he walked off towards the scary looking clown that was producing overly large, fake flowers from his sleeve. When Harrison turned back to grin at me, I took one of his chicken nuggets and ate it just to spite him. His eyes narrowed as he pursed his lips in silent scolding, before plopping himself down on the grass next to Evie and joining in the fun. My gaze traveled back to Finn as I sipped my wine. He was still talking with Morgan. She was currently giggling at something he, D said. Anger was making my feet twitch, and I longed to go over there and throw my wine right in his eyes and smile while it stung. Instead, I stayed back, watching, praying for her to walk away before other people noticed that my, supposedly loving, husband was trying his best to get into some taller, prettier, skinnier girl, S pants. I did not he want to cause a scene, I also did not he want people to look at me with that sympathetic awe, you cold not he hold onto your man? You poor dear, look in their eyes that they looked at me with last time I told my family that he, d cheated. But when Morgan put her hand on Finn's arm and he let in, giving her that smile, I saw Ed. Roughly setting my wine down onto the table, not even caring that it slopped over the sides and onto my hand, I stomped in their direction. When I got to them, Morgan looked up and her eyes widened in surprise before a smile graced her lips. Bronwyn? It's been years since I saw you. How are you? She gushed discreetly taking a step away from my husband and letting her hand drop from his arm. I forced a smile in return. I, V, been good, thank you. I see you, V, Meffin, my husband, I replied, putting plenty of emphasis around the last word as I slipped my hand in his and raised my chin. Her gaze darted to him and one of her eyes twitched as if this was a new revelation. Maybe she hadn't, he noticed the ring that he wore on his finger, or maybe she had seen it but just hadn't, T realized he was married to her friend's little sister. Oh, yes, we kind of already met. Finn was just helping me open my wine, she lied, picking up her glass as evidence of his helpful act. I ll catch up with you soon, Bronwyn. Without waiting for an answer, she sauntered off quickly, walking up to a group of sky, S friends and immersing herself in conversation, discreetly checking over her shoulder at us. Finn squeezed my hand. Uh oh, is someone jealous? Jealous? That had to be a joke? Dropping his hand, I turned to face him, looking him right in the eye. Jealous? I am not jealous of a slut like that. But I am bloody furious that you... D disrespect me in front of my whole family by hitting on one of my sister's friends at a birthday party. I hissed, leaning in so no one would suspect we were about to have one of our famous blazing rows. What's wrong with you? Seriously? He shrugged, reaching out and touching my face awkwardly with his drunken coordination so instead of the affectionate gesture he was going for, it was more like he smooshed my cheek roughly. It was harmless. He replied. I am just killing some time before we can go home. This fucking thing is boring as ever. I gritted my teeth as my hands clenched into fists. I wanted to punch something, really hard, right in the center of his flirtatious, drunken face. It s one thing to do this kind of shit in secret and me not see it or know about it. It s quite another to have you parading around at my niece. S birthday party leeching onto my childhood friends and not even seeming concerned that my family might see. He chuckled darkly. I am not parading around. I am just waiting for this fucking thing to be over so we can leave. 
kids, parties are an T my thing, you know that. Yeah, your thing is getting drunk and gambling our rent money away, I snapped, slapping away his hand as he went to touch my face again. Done, T touch me. Seriously, I am so angry with you that I want to, to, I didn't, to even know what I wanted to do. A smirk graced his lips as he let in. His beer breath blew across my face, and I silently wondered exactly how much alcohol he de-ingested. My guess would be, a lot. Want to go blow off some steam and have angry sex? He offered, winking at me. I almost choked on my scoff. Screw you, I muttered. His smile grew. That s what I offered, he replied hiccuping before letting out a large bilch that caused the people near us to turn their noses up in distaste. I shook my head in frustration. Why do you even bother coming with me to family parties? Seriously, all you do is whine about wanting to go home, get drunk, embarrass me and then sit on your phone playing online poker using my mum's internet. His eyes narrowed as he downed the last of his beer before slamming the bottle down onto the table. I come because you make me come. He retorted. I done, T make you come, I protested, gritting my teeth. He rolled his eyes as if I D said something ludicrous. Yes, you do, buttercup. If I done, T come with you then you sulk and done, T talk to me for days, and when you get back you make sarcastic comments about how everyone missed me and asked about me, trying to make me feel guilty. I done, T do it to make you feel guilty, I tell you that because people always ask where you are. Grinding my teeth in frustration, I shook my head. To be honest, it was easier for me when he was T here. At least then I did T have to watch over him all the time, making sure he was T too drunk and going to throw up somewhere, or say something inappropriate, or hit on my sister's friends. I was he even sure why I always asked him to accompany me to family gatherings, maybe it was because I was secretly hoping that one day he d actually want to be accepted as part of my family and that he d appreciate the effort they went to to include him. But no, it was clear now that would never happen. Finvison, t interested in being accepted by anyone. No what, just done, t come anymore. Done, t come to your niece's parties, done. T wish her happy birthday, done, T come to stay at my mum's any more than. Your niece, not mine, he corrected. My hand itched to slap his face. Biologically yes, she was my niece, but he had known her since birth, deed, T that count as family in his eyes. Whatever, just done, T come to any more family events then, I ll go on my own with Theo. Thank the fucking lord for small mercies, he muttered sarcastically. Frustrated and angered even more, I shook my head knowing I needed to walk away from him. If I stayed there much longer than I, D start shouting, and then he, D start shouting, and then I, D start throwing things, and that never ended well. Just go upstairs and sober up, I am done talking to you. I stomped off back to the table where I, D left my wine, picking it up and downing half a glass in two gulps. Hung me worriedly, my mom excused herself from her friends and walked over to me. Everything okay? She inquired. I nodded, forcing a smile so that she wouldn't, T know that I was mere moments from bursting into frustrated tears. Everything, s fine. Shall I go get the matches for the cake? I offered, trying to change the subject. From the corner of my eye, I saw Finn stomp into the house with a beer in each hand. I had no doubt in my mind that he would spend the rest of the party in the house and playing games on his phone and then we d ignore each other for the rest of the night before pretending like nothing had happened in the morning once he was sober. Mum nodded. Her furrowed brows told me that she didn't t believe that I was alright, but that she didn't t want to probe. I loved her even more for not prying because I didn't t want to admit that she d been right about Finn all along, and that he was no good for me, and that he would hurt me in the long run. Leaning in, I planted a soft kiss on her cheek before heading into the house to find the matches and pretend like I didn't 
T feel like a worthless pile of dog shit inside. All I wanted, all I, D ever really wanted, was for Finn to just love me like he should do and for us to lead a normal, happy life together. Was that really too much to ask for? Apparently it was. August 2013. The year following the birthday party was a hard one for me and Finn. Money was tight because Finn had written off the car in an accident, so we, D had to buy a new one. Well, a new old one. As a result of having to pay out for the new car, spare money was few and far between, which meant that some things had to give. I was working extra shifts whenever possible, and Finn had to cut back on his drinking. With him not drinking as much, he stayed home more often in the evenings, but all that resulted in was us arguing more. By spending more time together, it became glaringly obvious that we were totally and utterly incompatible. I, D known it before then, of course, but somehow our relationship worked because it was almost as if we led two separate lives and just shared a bed and bank account. But with us spending more time together, I realized that I actually didn't, T even like Finn anymore. Every single little thing about him irritated me, sometimes even just the way he breathed. The year had been long and painful, but we, D reached the point now where we didn't, to even argue anymore. It was like it was too much effort, too much contact with one another. Even the physical stuff between us had fizzled out. Finn didn't, to even try to instigate anything anymore with me. In fact, it was coming up to our five months, anniversary of no sex. I had a horrible, sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach that he was getting his kicks with some other girl, but I was too afraid to confront him about it. I sank to an all-time low. My confidence and self-worth bottomed out, and all I was left with was insecurities and a loathing of my own body, because clearly I wasn't even appealing to Finn in that way anymore either. If I were truthful, I d have to admit that I hated myself. I hated myself for not having the courage to get out of this destructive relationship, I hated myself for letting him treat me this way, and I hated myself for thinking that I did t deserve better. The final straw came on a day that I wasn't t expecting. I remembered the exact time that my life finally seemed to slip back into place and the exact time that I finally grew a backbone and stood up for myself. It was at 1.13 p.m. on a Tuesday in the first week of August. I, D just finished work at the diner. Dave, the fry cook, had accidentally scheduled two waitresses instead of one, thinking that it would be busy. But the lunchtime rush had never really seemed to come, so Karen and I had flipped a coin and the winner, me, got to go home an hour early. As I approached my flat, I knew that something was not right. Finn's car was parked in one of the allocated spaces for our building. He should have been working until 4. I frowned, fumbling with my keys, hesitating because part of me already knew what I d find if I went inside. I stopped with my key just millimeters from the lock, unsure if I wanted to go in. The lonely, needy part of me wanted to turn around and walk off, to spend an hour somewhere else and come back at my normal time. Part of me was terrified. But there was another part of me to this time, just a small spark of the old Bronwyn, the one my daddy had raised into a strong, confident woman who knew her worth and place in this world. For a long time I thought that girl had been banished, but she reared her head inside me now, demanding that I walk into the flat and see what I knew was happening inside. Somewhat unconsciously, my hand unlocked the door and my legs carried me over the threshold, closing the door behind me quietly. Everything looked normal inside my flat, just as I, D left it this morning before going to work. The only thing that was different was the three empty beer cans on the table and the half-drunk glass of wine with a harlot red lipstick mark around the rim. My back stiffened. A little whimper left my lips as my fears were confirmed. Finn had brought someone back to our home for sex. Luckily, Theo was spending the day and night with a friend tonight, so I didn't t have to worry about him for a little while. A bang and a girlish giggle came from the direction of my bedroom, and I closed my eyes, taking a couple of deep breaths preparing myself for what I was about to see. My legs shook as I made the 28 steps to my bedroom door. 
As my hand closed over the handle, I could hear them inside, heavy breathing, and her moaning my husband's name breathily. My heart was in my throat as I turned the handle and wrenched the door open. There they stood, Finn and some pretty, blonde girl that barely looked legal, pressed up against my bedroom wall in a passionate embrace. Her shirt was off, exposing a toned, sculpted figure that I d never had even before childbirth. His hands were on her pert little arse, and hers on the buttons of his jeans. Judging by the shocked and horrified expressions on both of their faces, they hadn't t heard me come in. Even though I d known what I was going to see, the shock of being confronted by Finn with another girl actually made my mouth pop open and the air whoosh out of my lungs at once. I d never actually caught him cheating before, never seen it with my own eyes, only the evidence after a rumors. Seeing it was worse than I thought it would be. And the disrespect that he would do it in our home, in our bedroom, hurt more than I could have imagined. It was like a slap in the face how low he would sink and how little he cared about me. Fiend immediately stumbled back from the girl and shook his head, holding up his hands innocently. This is not t what it looks like, he protested, his voice tight and panicked. I swallowed around the emotions that seemed to be trapped in my throat. I would like to have said that I was angry or distraught at catching my husband moments from banging someone up against a wall, but I was not t actually angry that he was about to cheat. Foolishly, I d gotten used to his cheating ways. I didn't t expect much else from him really. What I was extremely fucking angry about was that he had the nerve to do it in our home. That disrespect caught me deeply and tasted so bitter in my mouth that I actually wanted to spit to get rid of it. Who s that? The girl asked, looking from me to Finn. Clearly he d neglected to tell his lay of choice that he was married. Finn shook his head quickly. This is all a misunderstanding. We were just talking. I was just showing her. He motioned towards the mortified looking girl and frowned as if trying to recall her name. Um. Cheryl. She hissed, picking up her discarded shirt from the floor and yanking it down over her head. Finn nodded quickly. Cheryl, right, he muttered. I was just, he gulped, clearly having no lie on hand to make this right. He turned back to me. It's not what it looks like. Who is that? Cheryl asked again, angrier this time. I am his wife. Did he neglect to tell you that he was married with a child? I asked. Her face paled. But you said you were widowed. She looked at Finn in disbelief. I kept my gaze glued on Finn as I sank my teeth into the side of my cheek. He d told her I was dead. The pain of that was crushing. He recoiled, shaking his head his lips flailing as if trying to come up with some bullshit lie to get him out of this situation. When it appeared that he had nothing to say for himself, I turned to the girl. Go home, was the only thing I could think of to say to her. I called and t be angry with her if he d fooled her too, in fact, I actually felt a little sorry for her. She blinked a couple of times and then nodded, straightening her clothes as she practically ran from the room with tears in her eyes. I turned back to Finn, not even knowing what to say. I had a million things running through my mind, a thousand things I wanted to scream at him, what a cheating scumbag he was, how I hated him, how he was a useless husband, and how low he made me feel because I was not enough for him and that he felt the need to seek physical attention from other girls. But instead I said nothing. As usual I kept it all bottled up. Partly because I was afraid that once I said those things I would have to acknowledge the truth of them and do something about it, and partly because I was afraid of the consequences of admitting that we were broken beyond repair. How could you do this again? I finally whispered. But as I spoke, my anger seemed to build like a storm inside me, all of the hurt brewing up from years of being treated like dirt at his hands and for not being appreciated for everything that I did for him. What if it hadn't? T been me to come in. What if it had been Theo that came home early and caught his father screwing a young girl up against a wall? Rage. It took over everything, colored my vision, burned my throat. You, re a useless sack of sheet, Finn Reynolds. He nodded, flinching as if my words stung. 
I know, I know. I am sorry. Sorry? You, re sorry? That, s not fucking good enough. I ranted. Was she even legal? She looked like a fucking child. His brows furrowed. She, s 18, he answered quietly. I nodded absent-mindedly. That, LLBY her tits looked like fucking rocks still then, huh? I muttered. I am sick of this sheet. My eyes filled with tears, causing everything to blur. Finn stepped forward, cuping my cheeks and tilting my head up so I had to look at him. His pale green eyes were sorrowful and apologetic, the same as they always were when I confronted him about one of his affairs. He gulped, and the silence stretched on and on, almost until it became painful as we both stood there and fought against what we both knew we should do. I love you, he whispered. Those words meant nothing to me anymore, they were just empty, meaningless words strung together and thrown out for effect. You can, t do. If you did, you old and t do this, I replied weakly, putting my hand on his chest and pushing him away from me. But I do, he protested. I am sorry. I am so sorry, buttercup. I done, t know what I was thinking. I done, t know why I do this. I am sorry. I took a deep breath as I realized something that I already knew, way deep down inside me. I was better than this. I was better than this man that stood in front of me that had every single part of me at his disposal, but yet disrespected me so easily for a casual fuck with a pretty girl. I deserved better than to be treated like this. I put myself through this time and time again because I believed that maybe he would change. Maybe he, d stop looking at other girls, maybe, one day, I would be enough for him and then we would fall back in love again and have the life that I dreamt of when I was a little girl. I am sick of this happening, I am sick of you cheating, I am sick of feeling second best and that this is my fault somehow. I deserve better than this, I muttered, shaking my head and looking down at my wedding ring on my third finger of my left hand. I never signed up for this. I hate the way you make me feel so worthless all the time, Finn. I can t do this anymore. He made a strangled noise in the back of his throat as he stepped closer to me again, gripping my upper arms tightly. What? Bronwyn, done, t say that, done, t do this. I love you, and I am sorry. This will never, ever happen again. I love you. You ruin my life. You and Theo are the only important things to me. I LL never do it again, I swear. I am so sorry. I can change. I will change. Please, forgive me. You do deserve better, and I LL be better. Please, Buttercup, please. His voice was desperate, frightened even. I could hear the vulnerability in his tone as his fingers bit into my arms, holding me in place. His words were always the same after I found out about his cheating. He always promised to change, apologized until he was blue in the face, and gushed how much he loved me. But it wasn't, t enough, not this time. I, d be lost without you, you know that. This will never happen again. It, s you and me, forever. Just you and me, no one else. I closed my eyes fighting the humiliation that was causing my heart to squeeze painfully in my chest. Finn, we done, t work. We do. He protested. You done, t want to be on your own any more than what I do. We need each other. And we can, t just break up, imagine what that ll do to Theo. I frowned, knowing he was throwing every emotional tool at me to try and make me not say the words that were right on the tip of my tongue. I hated him for bringing in those things, but those were the reasons I d put up with him for this long already, because I did not he want to take Theo s dad away from him, and because I was afraid. Afraid to be on my own, afraid to be a single parent, afraid to walk up to my mother and tell her that she d been right about Finn all along. How would I look her in the eye after knowing that I should have listened to her all those years ago, when she saw that he was no good? Please. Buttercup. I am sorry. Let me make it up to you. I ll try harder. I ll be better. 
I swear. As he spoke, his breath reeked of alcohol as it blew across my face. Maybe we could get some counseling or something. I could learn how to be a better husband. Just done, T give up on us, done, T let me screw this up, please. His hands slid up my arms, coming to rest on my neck, his thumbs stroking my jawline softly. I ll do anything. Let me make this up to you. Just one more chance? Can't we start over, we ll work it out? Please. My decision had already been made though and no matter how much he pleaded, how much his eyes bore into mine, how softly he stroked my face, I called and to change my mind, not this time. I felt different inside. Starting over was scary and terrifying, but my pride had been wounded irrevocably by the sight I d walked in on. I called and t pretend any longer. My words left my lips before I fully thought through the consequences of them. Take your filthy, lying, cheating hands off me, and move the fuck out of my flat. I hissed, raising my chin confidently. I am done. We redone. I took a deep breath before saying the last bit. I want a divorce. The words didn't de hurt as much as I thought they would. In fact, it was almost a relief saying it, and they took some of the weight off my shoulders that I d been carrying around for the last twelve and a half years since we said the words I do. The finality of the word divorce hung in the air and, in that split second, I actually felt proud of myself. I was finally making a stand and believing that I was worth it and that I deserved more, even if more meant being on my own and starting life over again. I d made the right choice. April 2014. And you, reassure you, are you really okay? Sky asked for the hundredth time. I sighed and nodded in confirmation. Of course I am. Will you stop worrying about me? This has been coming for a long time. To be honest, I am glad it's over with, I admitted, shrugging. She gave me a meaningful look and took the hairbrush from my hand, taking hold of my shoulders and turning me in my seat. Let me do your hair. I smiled gratefully. I knew that was t just what this was for. This was a supportive gesture because she thought I was going to be freaking out. I was t though. Like I d just assured her, I was totally fine and this had been coming for a long time. It should have happened years ago and then maybe I would have had a little more self-confidence and self-worth. Finn and I had our divorce finalized today, and a beautiful copy of my decree absolute had been delivered to me this morning in a stiff brown envelope. It had taken a lot of arguing before we finally got to this point. For some reason, Finn Deaton, he wanted to make our split permanent and had fought the divorce at every possibly stage. Why he wanted to hang on to our destructive relationship, I had no idea though. We were never really any good for one another. We both knew it. It had just taken us almost 14 years of being together to finally admit it. But I, D had to take the leap and make this change because I couldn't, T keep up the act any longer. I called and, T keep pretending that I was happy when, in reality, I was miserable. But finally today, 8 months after I uttered the words I want a divorce, my wish was finally granted, and I called and, T have been more relieved about it. Coincidentally. Brandon was throwing a rather large party because his business was celebrating a monumental three-year advertising contract that his company had just landed. The timing of the party worked out perfectly, and would be the perfect excuse for me to get off my face drunk without it looking like it was something to do with my divorce. Plus, I had a child-free weekend to because Theo was staying with Finn, as parents for the weekend. My son had taken the split a lot better than I thought he would. Deep down he, D probably known that this was a long time coming too. He was almost 14 now, so he wasn't, T exactly a child anymore, he knew how things worked. He, D caught me crying on more than one occasion over the years when I, D let Finn's escapades get me down. I, D never spoken to Theo about Finn's cheating ways, but it seemed that he knew anyway somehow. Even though he had always been a decent dad, Theo still held a lot of resentment towards his father for hurting me, and they were currently going through a particularly rocky patch that I hoped they remedied soon. 
I smiled as my sister styled my hair and wrapped my arm around Evie's shoulder. My niece was now eight years old. She was beautiful and the perfect image of her mother, except she didn't have sky s feisty spirit. She was more laid back and chilled like her dad. Annie Bronwyn, why didn't Theo come again? She asked, pouting. I smiled teasingly. Evie had a real soft spot for my teenager, though he didn't he really like hanging out with an eight-year-old. He s looking after his nan for the weekend. She needed him to help her with some stuff, I lied. Truth be told, Theo had been invited to the party too, but I d just needed a little break from him. He was turning into a stropy little thing, and we were clashing every day at the moment. He definitely lacked a strong male presence in his life. The one he did have missed, t exactly a great role model, so Theo was hanging out in the streets, spraying on walls and being a general pain in the arse. Last week he d been brought home to me in a police car because he threw a bag of dog mess at a patrol car. Just yesterday he d punched another boy in the face because the other kid laughed at Theo's old-fashioned mobile phone. I was struggling, seriously struggling, and this weekend was supposed to give me a break. Oh, I miss Theo, heavy wine. I patted her on the head. Come stay at mine in a couple of weeks and I... LL make him play with you for the whole weekend, I suggested, eyeing Sky in the mirror to make sure that was okay, because I could quickly backtrack if it was T. She nodded and Evie screeched happily, clapping her hands excitedly. I grinned slyly. That was punishment and a half for my little rule breaker, he was going to hate me for that one. After Sky was done making my hair look really cute in a little updo, I slapped on a little makeup and did a twirl. How do I look? I asked. I already knew the answer. I looked like a stressed, overworked single mom with no money. In one word, I looked exactly like I felt inside, sheet. Sky smiled and clasped her hands together. You look beautiful, Bronwyn. Here, let me find you a necklace that would look perfect with that dress. She gushed, leaning over her dresser and pulling out a jewelry box, rooting through it with a small frown. I laughed uncomfortably. Sky, I can de wear your jewelry too. I already borrowed this dress, I protested, brushing my fingers down the expensive designer silk dress I was wearing. I de never had anything quite so luxurious or expensive wrapped around me. I called and t take advantage of my sister any more than I already was. She waved her hand dismissively. Oh, just hush already, she ordered pulling out a delicate gold necklace with a beautiful flower hanging on the center. I d seen her wear it and it was always one of my favorites of hers, she knew that. This would be perfect, she gushed, setting the box back down. Turn around and I, LL put it on you. I groaned in protest, but turned as instructed, knowing she d only whine and whine until I conceded anyway. When she d set the beautiful thing around my neck, I looked at myself in the mirror and chewed on my lip. Sky looped her arm through mine and smiled. My heart sank. I felt so plain, ugly and worthless standing next to Sky. She was gorgeous, made even more so by the expensive highlights in her hair, the lash extensions and the manicure. She and Brandon had always been on the opposite side of the breadline to me. Sky had probably never worked a hard day in her life. Me, on the other hand, I could see the wrinkles forming around my eyes where I had stresses and worries that kept me awake well into the night. My nails weren't t perfectly long and shaped like hers were. Instead, they were short and broken because of too much washing up in the kitchen of the calf copyright and scrubbing of office buildings. I looked like I was playing dress up in her expensive looking dress. I actually detested myself. My eyes swam with tears, so I looked away to Evie. What about you then, sweetie pie? Are you getting all dressed up for daddy's party? I asked, looking down at her in her pajamas, 